Hey everybody, <laughs> coming at you live <clears throat> from my sewing room. Now, <clears throat> I try my best to do videos that are requested, and uh, some get more requested than others. And I have had so many requests for basic sewing. And I've said to a lot of people, uh, you know, there's a lot of videos on sewing. and uh, But they're like, yeah, but I want to learn from you, Dave. <laughs> so... Here is uh, pretty much the basics on how to sew. And if you've never touched a sewing machine, this is the video for you. And uh, sewing and using sewing machines is just going to open up a whole new world of projects for you. Uh, making custom gear, saving money, stuff like that. So I'm going to try to do the best I can. And uh, for those of you that do not know how to sew, you're going to enjoy this. And for those of you that already know how to sew, just join along for a few laughs. <laughs> because I am self-taught. I bought a machine and watched YouTube videos and just learned on my own. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you what I know. So let's dive right into it and I'm going to kind of explain how the sewing machine works before I show you how to use it. All right. So what we have here is this is my Singer 4423. All right. Now it has a foot pedal that operates the needle here. We'll mash the foot pedal. Right. That makes the needle go up and down. Now as the needle goes up and down, you'll notice there's a little arm up here. See that thing pop up? All right. That thing pops up when the needle is up. Okay. That is how you're going to put the spool of thread up on top. Okay. There's a spool of thread that goes up on top. This one either goes here or it goes here. And I'm going to show you how to put that on. How you thread that up. I think that's called the top bobbin. Now underneath the needle down here, there will be a smaller one called the bottom bobbin. All right. Now, I'm going to explain how this works before I thread it up. That way you'll understand why you're threading it up. And then i explain what all these knobs and things do later. Okay. So, what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to explain this. The thread from the top comes down and goes through the eye of the needle and gets pushed down into the bottom. And then the bottom spool that goes round and round, I'm going to show you what that does. So let me grab a piece of paper. Okay. Let's move this thing over. Okay, you've got the top needle. Okay, here's the top needle. Okay, and it's got an eye. Okay, that's the top. Now, under the bottom where the spool goes, there is a thing called a shuttle. And what it is, is it's kind of like a, a cam with an arm on it. Alright. Now, the top thread, okay, here's the fabric that you're feeding through. Alright. The top thread that comes from the top spool comes down and goes through this eye and then comes down here. All right? And what it does is it is caught by the shuttle and it is carried around and goes out. Now the reason it carries around and goes out is because the bottom shuttle winds up going through it. And in a sense, what that causes is the top thread, and this is what makes a stitch, is the top thread is essentially this. And the bottom thread is going through here, locking. Okay, now I just want to get that clear there. There's a top thread and a bottom thread, and that's what makes the stitch. Okay, and they're under tension. There's a top tension and a bottom tension. Now, don't all let all this stuff overwhelm you because it's going to be quite simple when I show you in a minute. But I just, I, th I feel like if you'll understand how a stitch is formed from a top and bottom of a piece of thread that you'll understand it a little bit better. So all machines are made different, so you'll have to look at your instructions. But 
I'm going to show you with this one because this is a popular machine and it's the one I use and it's all basically the same thing. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with a spool of thread. For your outdoor projects you want to use nylon or polyester because cotton will dry rot. Okay. This is a three ply polyester. And sometimes I use what's called a, a heavy upholstery thread. I think this is some. Um, or, yeah, that's button craft. Whatever holds buttons on, or whatever is considered heavy, or whatever is considered an upholstery thread is good. Now, normally what you do is you'll put this on, and you'll fill up some thread onto your bottom bobbin. All right? And I've already filled this one up, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something different. And you always buy extra bobbins. Always. Always have extra bobbins around. Because once you fill them up, see, I have several boxes already filled up. And what I do is I keep my bottom bobbin filled up, ready to go with my top spool. That way, if I have a certain color of something that I want to do, they're ready to go. Alright. So, but what I'm going to do is so that you'll understand how a stitch works, I'm going to put some red on here and I'm going to fill up a spool. Now there's class 15 bobbins and there's class 66. If I remember right, I think Brother Machines uses a 66 and the older singers use a 66, but these use the 15. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this now normally when you when you mash the foot pedal okay what it does is it runs the needle down here but when you put this on this little spool here and mash down and push back it disengages the needle and it runs this thing see when it's this way it won't run okay now what you do here is you take your your bobbin I mean, your, whoop, your thread. <laughs> I knew I'd be bumbling around. Okay, and then you put on something here that holds it, and I don't know the name of this thing. Some kind of disc. And then you're going to run it. My machine is numbered. And there's a little hook that you put this on, and then there's an arrow that you wrap it around here. And then you bring it over here. And there's a little square thing inside here. What you do is you feed it up inside that square. It's bumbling around a little bit. You feed it up inside that square. Now you have to do this for every color thread. And then you push it on there. Push it back. And then you hold it while you mash the foot pedal. There you go. Now see that thing, something happened. That didn't work out right. For some reason it came off. Oh, I know what it was. I pulled it off when I was showing it to you. Alright, so this thing is filled up. I got some red on there. There wasn't much thread on there, but this will be enough for what we're going to be doing. Now this little piece, that's a little tail that's hanging off the top, you want to trim it off. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. Let's set that down there. Now I'm going to show you. Let's get rid of this old thing here. Man, that's some old thread. So anyway, I bought, sometimes I buy old thread from like uh, yard sales and estate sales and stuff. I find like a, like a whole bag of it or something. Alright, so let's put this on. And then put this thing on again. I don't know the name of it. But you want to put it on. Make sure this will spin. Alright. Now, can you see what I'm doing? Okay. There's a thing right here that says number one all right so you go around it and then there's a thing right here a polished piece let me run you down a little bit i think i'm gonna try to zoom in right here let's see where's the zoom at oh it's on the top wrong way all right all right, I'm zoomed. Okay, now, there's a little piece right here, and I'm going through that. It's labeled number one, and then there's a piece right here, number two, all right? Now, I'm going to run this by hand. All 
until this thing comes up. I'm going to show you again. See, remember that little arm that comes down? I'm going to run that up. Now, never, ever, ever run a sewing machine backwards. There's a little hand wheel over there on the side that you can crank up with. Never run one backwards. Ever. That's not good. That'll hurt a machine because it'll, it damages the parts of it. So let's turn. Man, this is hard to film. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is so hard to film. Okay, so now what you do is you come down through here. This is labeled number three. And you pull this through, and it's got a number four, and you pull it up. And then you go behind here, and you pull across here. And then this down here says number six. And you pull it down. All right. Crank the camera down. Well, I'm gonna have to cut you off and back. So as you can see here, I've got the thread coming down. Now there's a little piece of sheet metal right here, and there's another little piece of sheet metal right here. Okay. Now here's the needle. And this here is called the foot. And there's a little spring-loaded device back here where the foot comes off. Now the foot is a highly polished piece of metal with a slot in it and that's what the fabric runs under. So let's put it back on. And of course the needle has a little hole in it called an eye. What you want to do is you want to take the thread and run it behind this piece of sheet metal and run it behind this piece of sheet metal. Now mach some machines have this fancy little device right here for threading this is for putting the uh, thread through the eye, but I've never used it. I always just do it by hand because that's what I'm used to doing. I guess it's that's the way I started out doing, and then that's the way I do it. But you want to come from the front, and you want to push it through, just like that. Now let's see if I can zoom in on that for the heck of it. Nah, I don't think I'm going to be able to. Well, yeah, maybe. All right, now see how I'm doing this? See how I've got it pushed through? See it behind my thumb? So what I do is I put both fingers on it and I pull it through. Well, my hand's in the way. All right, now see it on the back side here? So what you do with it then... As you go down the middle of the foot and you come out the back side okay now that's that's how you do that part now let's work on putting in the bottom bobbin now I've got the uh, thread going down the needle and coming out behind it and then going I went through the split and it's coming out the side right here see it right there all right see so what you want to do is just leave that laying there now, right here, there's a little clip here. You flip it, and it lifts this up. And mine has instructions on it for which direction this goes. Now, see, this is showing the thread. It shows which direction that it unravels, and then it goes around this polished piece of sheet metal and comes up. All right. Now, this polished piece of sheet metal in here is called the shuttle. Every once in a while, you want to take it out and clean it. So what you want to do, oh, just dropped it. That ain't good. Normally I'm pretty good with a sewing machine, but this is not easy to do by having to film it all. All right, so let's take this. And let's drop it in. All right, and what you want to do is you want to run it around that piece of sheet metal, and you just want to leave it hanging out, just like that. And then you put the cover back over it, and the cover just kind of locks that piece in place right here. All right. Now here's the hard part. Some people do this. You're going to want this top needle to go down one stroke, and then you're going to want that needle to come up, and you're going to stop it as you watch this come around. 
Now, I'm going to try to zoom this in just a little bit so that you can watch what the mechanism does. But what you want to do is you want to hold on to this back piece to keep it from pulling loose. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash this. It's going down. And as it comes up, all right, you're going to watch this thing. If you can see, you can see that black thread maybe. That black thread is going to pull around the bottom spool. That will bobbin. There it goes. All right, now I didn't mean to do that. You're not supposed to back one up, but I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to reach under here, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to pull. Okay, now. Oh, I wish the camera was on the other side. I just pulled. See, now I've got the red and the black thread. Okay, see that? The top thread grabbed the bottom thread and pull it through the hole. So now let's move the camera once more. All right. Let's move it around here. And let's just lift it up like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this thread just hanging out. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a stitch. All right. And I'm going to show you every single time you make a stitch, this is how you do it. Now we're going to start with some white material here. What you want to do is on the back side, there's a lever on the back side of the machine straight up here that drops the foot right there. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold on to the thread and ease in. And what you want to do is the, the bottom of this thing has these two feet that pulls, it comes up in, up in, up in, and it pulls the material through. So what you want to do is you want to make a couple of stitches like that. And then there's a button that says reverse. And you're going to hold that button down, and it's going to make it back up. And that's what you call locking in the stitch. You mash it down, and go back over what you just sewed. And then you go forward. Okay? Now, sometimes when you're doing this, you can turn, lift it up, and you can turn the material, and you can drop the foot down continue to sew. Alright, so let's do that again. Turn this around. Now I'm going to show you something else here in a minute. So let's watch this again. Let me, let me zoom in so you can get a better look at it. All right, now when you get to the end of a stitch, you want to back it up again and lock in. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to lift up the foot and pull it to the side. And so you've got like a, a jumbled up mess right there. What you want to do is you want to cut it and you want to leave these threads laying to the side. Now let's take a look at what we sewed. Now something didn't work right over here. As you can see, the bottom thread is red and the top is black, but you can see parts of it. Now it may be the material that I used, but that's the basic idea right there. All right. So I'm gonna show you something else over here. Let me let me cut this thing off so that I can uh, makes it easier to edit. Let's talk about some of these buttons here now. This thing here has a bunch of different stitch designations on it. It's got like zigzag and dots and all this kind of stuff. You'll have to refer to your book on what works what. Now up here you have stitch length. All right, four, three, two, and one. Now I'll show you something about that in a minute. Now up top is stitch width. That's how wide it'll be. Like when you're zigzagging. I'll show you that in a minute. This is needle position. All right, right now it's on zero. I'll show you what that is. This is the top tension. Usually once it's set, I don't mess with it again. But I'm going to bumble with this needle position to show you something. Let's see. Let's zoom in here on this needle. When I move needle position... See what it does to the needle? 
it moves it over. All right, so let's leave this thing on zero. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you slow up and speed down, or what stitch length does and what stitch width does. All right, so let's back this up. This is not good material. Something is not working right. It shouldn't do that. It shouldn't do that, but it may be that bottom thread. But anyway, let me let me show you something here. Let's go with length. Let's turn it down to number one and see what it does. All right. And then let's turn it up to two. Turn it to three. Turn it up to four. Now let's look and see what it did on stitch length. This is a vinyl material, not necessarily a cloth material. Now if you look at the top, the top looks pretty much the same. But if you look at the bottom, see how close those are? And then see how they're starting to get further apart. Now see, this is doing terrible on this vinyl. Vinyl is not easy. We're going to sew some cloth in a minute, but since this is wide, it's showing you. Okay, now stitch width. Let's take a look at stitch width here. Let's pull this out. All right. You have to back it up. Go forward. Okay, now with the needle up in the air... I'm going to switch this over to zigzag. It's a zigzag switch. Now, on width, let's start out on number one. Okay. Now, go up. Let's go over to three. Now let's go, lift it up, let's go over to six. Let's run it up. And then I'm fixing to show you what it looks like. This is going to be fun for you to experiment with once you get to sewing. But now if you look on the bottom side, you can see how it started out. That was a number one. It barely zigzagged. And then I got to number two. And then I got to the six. And see, it made the stitch width different. All right. Now I'm going to show you one more thing on this little piece of junk vinyl here. <laughs> All right. I've got to make sure. And every time you want to make sure that some of this thread is pulled out to the side. All right. And usually what you want to do is whenever you're beginning a stitch, <clears throat> you'll want to take it off a of zigzag and put it back on the regular stuff. So that you can lock it in. Oh wait, I just broke. I just broke the thread. All right, I had the top thread break loose, and sometimes that just happens. But I've got this thing started back, and I've got it on the zigzag. Okay, now this is zigzagging as wide as it can possibly go. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to manipulate the length. Let's turn it all the way down to one. Turn it down, back up to four. All right, now let's pull it out and take a look at it and see how it looks. Now, like I said, this vinyl, this vinyl is some bad stuff. Now, let's look at this. Let's look at this where I started out. See where my thumb is? See, that was a zigzag like the bottom one, but look when I slowed down the feed rate, what it did. Those make some really strong stitches right there. Now, I don't know what happened right there. That's weird looking. It's not acting right on this. On this vinyl. 
All right, but that's basically how sewing machine works. Let's get some cloth and do some good looking stitches because I'm going to show you something else. So this is my sewing table, quite organized. <laughs> and then I have a shelf over there that's got a bunch of junk on it, a bunch of extra thread and stuff. And, uh, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh, amongst uh, 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 chaos is uh, genius. <laughs> At least that's what I've been told. <laughs> now, I keep a lot of extra supplies in bins like this. And I keep a lot of extra thread laying over on the shelf all kinds of different colors and thicknesses and things and I keep a lot of webbing uh, I have I have bins and bins and bins of material and I have bins of webbing for projects that I keep so I mean nothing is garbage when it comes to this kind of stuff here oh uh, now you're gonna need some extra needles keep extra needles Buy, buy whatever needles are going to be for your machine. Now, general purpose needles are going to be like an 8011. You can buy an assortment of sizes. 8011 for thinner stuff. 9014 for the medium stuff. 116 for the heavy stuff like canvas and denim. And then for ripstop nylon, you're going to want 7009. Real thin stuff. Now, for the 7009, you're going to want a roller foot. Because... Um, a machine, let me get right here a minute, uh, ripstop nylon is real slippery and it doesn't work very good with a normal foot so you're going to want a roller foot. It's a clear plastic foot with a, two rollers in it. There's one example of it and then here's another example of it. This is a roller foot. Let me open it up and show you because I'm sure you outdoorsy people will be doing a lot of ripstop nylon, but it's it's a clear foot with a little roller over it. It's because there's uh, nylon ripstop nylon is like you'd make a tent out of or an, or, or a rain jacket or something. It is just so slippery that you need something like that. And then there's a whole variety of specialty feet that you can buy for switching out. Now a lot of people. Okay, this is more of an example of what stitches should look like. All right, but I was using that because it was on a white background to kind of show you. But that white, that that vinyl, that white vinyl does the tension doesn't always work on it properly. But uh, this is the way it's supposed to look. Uh, another thing is a lot of people when they go to uh, when they go to join fabric. What they'll do, and you might have seen in some of my, my last videos, when they go to join fabric together, what they'll do is they'll fold it over, and then they'll take pins, the old-fashioned pin cushion like your grandma used to have, and they'll take pins, and they'll pin it together. But I've actually found a better way. They make clips, super, super strong clips. So I'm going to show you how these things work. Okay, so whenever, like, you're going to join fabric together... You lay them together, and let's fold this over. Let's fold this over like that. All right. And what you'll do, this is just a tiny piece. This is just an example of what we'll be doing. And as you're assembling a piece like this, what you're going to do is you're going to put all this stuff together to hold it. Just like that. Alright, so let's take this a step further. Where's my little scissors? Let's cut a little notch out of this, like that, and that. And then let's fold it over this way. Now, this is some ripstop polyester, it's got the lines in it. This is just some typical type things that you would use. For sewing. Now let's imagine you were going to make a bag or whatever. Okay, so let's take this over to the sewing machine and let's sew this and see how it turns out. So the red thread ran out on the bottom, so I put the black back in. So now with cloth, this is the piece I prepared just a second ago that I just threw in there. So <clears throat> this is going to turn out a lot better being cloth. Vinyl doesn't sew well at all. So what you want to do is you want to slide this under there. All right, this is the step-by-step -step process. 
drop down the foot kind of kind of hold on to this make sure it doesn't get sucked in a couple of stitches hit the reverse button back up that's called locking it in and then what you're going to do is you're going to sew in until you get to a clip and then you're going to pull the clip off throw it to the side all right Okay, let's pull this to the side. All right, and then what you want to do is you want to reach over here to this handle, and I'm going to crank it until that needle goes down and touches. All right, now after it touches, I'm going to lift up the foot in the back back here. So I'm lifting up the foot. And now the needle is in the fabric. Don't lift the foot up if the needle is not in the fabric. And I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. Okay. Let's drop the foot back down. Alright. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this clip off here. Set it to the side. And let's sew forward. And let's pull off this last one. Throw it to the side. And let's sew up here. Okay, now let's do this. Let's turn this fabric around. Run one stitch over. There you go. Lift this up, come around, and then let's feed back through. Now sometimes, see how this is lifting up? Sometimes you want to kind of make sure and give that fabric a push underneath there. Right there. All right, so let's lift this up again. Now let's go one more stitch. One more right there. Turn it around. Now let's feed this, let it pull itself in. Now this machine has variable speed. Alright, so now we're at the end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash the reverse button and hold it down while I'm backing up. Alright, and that's called locking in the stitch. And then go forward. Alright. Lift it up. Pull it to the side. And then you want to cut those tails off. Then you'll leave this hanging loose for your next next go around. So let's look at this now. What you want to do is you want to trim off these tails. Now let's look and see how neat this looks. See how neat the stitches look on this side? See how neat they look on this side? Now they're a little bit curvy, but I mean, this just, you know, I... <laughs> I ain't trying to win a beauty contest, but this is just the way these things go. So now, let's say, example, if I was making a bag, I would have made the bag like that. And then you can turn the bag inside out after you've done it. Like this. And see, you don't see any seams. You don't see any thread. See? So that's the beauty of sewing right there. And I'm asked, that's pretty much the basics of sewing. Ain't that cool? Alright, for those of you that just wanted to learn how to sew, that's the end of the video. You can cut it off now. <laughs> for the rest of you that just want to spend a little bit of time with Dave and hear Dave's thoughts, stick around. Now, as far as a bushcrafter, camper, survival expert, general cheapskate, do-it-yourselfer goes, I'm going to give you some ideas for some projects here. Okay? Alright. Now, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through just pick things up. All right, this was an old chair, part of an old chair, and I turned it into a pouch for uh, utensils. Or you could fill it with coffee beans because it's a triple wall bag. Put the coffee beans in, smash it, and it's a coffee bean beaten bag. I call it a bean beaten bag, but when I'm not using it for coffee, I'll put utensils in it. All right, that's one project. A lot of other things that you can do is... You can just make general bags for things. Now, you could make a normal cotton bag like this, but what I do is I like to line it with Tyvek. 
all right that way it's a double wall bag and then I always make a, a I ordered a whole a whole bag full of these uh, spring clips from Amazon and what I do is I always at the top of the bags I always to make them to where you can cinch them up like that and pull that spring clip and tighten them up all right and see that's just a cotton woodland camo now this is a big bag this is not a lined bag but I got some ACU material all right, or, or I think UCP, I think, uh, Universal Camouflage Pattern, but everybody knows this is AC, ACU. Now, this is one of those things that I was talking about. About See how see how nice it looks on the outside right there? Well, see on the inside, that's that seam I showed you that we made a minute ago, all right? So you can just, you can make bags of all different kinds. This is a ripstop nylon bag. One time I ordered some genuine ripstop nylon. It's a, a Marpat marine pattern. And I made that and spring clip. I always make these out of paracords. And sometimes you can add a carabiner to the end so that you can hang it off of something. Matter of fact, I've got another bag I'll go get and I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, here's another thing. It's a ripstop nylon and I've got it lined with a real heavy material. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a real heavy duty material for like my homemade tent stakes. Uh, that was one of my first tent stake bags that I made. Alright. Later on, I made a tent stake bag and I used some elastic banding. And then I put Velcro on it so that those army type of the military uniforms. I could just attach it to my side there and just reach up and pull out a tent stake. And I just walked around camp, you know, as I was setting up my tarp. And then this, this edging right here, uh, that's called grow grain ribbon. And what it is, it's, or for fancy, fancy talk, it's grow grain ribbon. A southerners, it's edging. <laughs> All right, so that's one thing. Something else. Let's see. Oh, tarps. I have made so many tarps in the past, it is just unbelievable. And you can make a normal tarp or like uh, at a ripstop nylon. And let me show you something here. Like these grabber blankets, you could take and you could add webbing to it or what's called grow grain ribbing. That way you can have tiles for it. Same thing with camo moving blankets. I've added webbing to all of them. And like I said, I just keep... I keep handfuls of webbing just laying around everywhere, and and every time I every chance I get to buy webbing or or old uh, backpacks at thrift stores with the fast tex buckles, you know I, I get them. And sometimes I order sometimes I order whole rolls of webbing. I've got some of that. And uh, but anyway, you can make like tarps. And see, when I made this tarp, I managed to get a hold of some of the reflective material. And I also got a hold of, I ordered some olive drab webbing off of Amazon. And I made the edging for it for strength so that it could be stretched tight. And then I made the little, the little loops on it. And that's a woodland camo right there, tarp. So, yeah, you can make your own tarp. I've made tents before. I made a tree tent. I made a video of it. And it's a tent that you hang between trees. And uh, I've made several shelters. Y'all might remember the Dakota Pitch shelter. I made it. Uh, this is a, a seat that I made. I got a hold of a whole bunch of olive drab material and I sewed this up and it's a seat and there's a bunch of heavy duty webbing sewed to it. And this is some of that webbing that I would buy by the roll and uh, you need, this, this is what you need one of those heavy needles and the heavy upholstery thread for for, for sewing this up. And as a matter of fact, I've got a project here. Let's see if I can find it. I got a project here that's in the works and it is an olive drab type material and it's got the webbing and it's not even sewn together. As you can see I've still got the clips on it where I haven't even done it. It's, it was the mock-up with the clips. It's a lot better than the pins. And the opening of this shelter is going to be done with have a bug net on it. So but yeah that's just something laying over here on the table. The other thing that you can do with the webbing is pretty neat is you can just make certain items like all this is is just a simple piece of webbing that I sewed up and I measured to just the right size for let's take a look here okay I have say this is a condor bushcraft harangue right? 
check this out all you got to do is take this and slide this up on it's just a loop you slide it up on and then take a mora all right it's got a clip you can clip it onto this part clip it onto that that, that buckle that it comes on and then if you'll measure right, you can slide this webbing up, all the way up. And the thing is, is the more, higher up I slid it, the tighter it got. So there's no way that this knife will slip through it. And if you're worried about this slipping down, you can put hot glue gun under here to hold it. And see, there you've just a simple way of adding a knife to a machete. All right, just a simple project. Uh, right here. This is the uh, SE, wait a minute, this ain't good. I don't need to leave that unhooked. This is the SE uh, Hungalas, okay? It's got the uh, Kydex sheath, but I wanted to carry a silky saw with it. So, see this heavy-duty Cordura? I bought a computer laptop bag from, uh, from uh, Goodwill, and I cut it up, and I used the material, and it even had some elastic on it. The only thing I had to buy was a buckle. And that was back before I had a good supply of buckles. Now, every time I find a laptop bag or a suitcase or anything with buckles, I buy it and I cut it all into pieces and I put it in my bucket over there. <laughs> but anyway, and see, this way right here, now I've got a way that I can carry my silky saw with me. See? So it's no longer just a knife. It's a knife and a saw. Isn't that neat? And I have, as a matter of fact, I'm fixing to make another project here. And I may show bits and pieces of it at the end of it where I'm going to make another sheath. Now, let's look here. Uh, something else. Oh, let me show you something else right here. Some of these machete sheaths, the belt loop is right here. And you got a whole bunch of handle right here that will stab you in the side when you're hiking. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. All right? Uh, I don't like that. So, what I did is I made a dangler. All right, this is a Condor Warlock, okay? This sheath, what I did is uh, I Velcroed on a Condor Woodlaw so that I've got my machete and my knife. I just, when it, it come in a nice leather pouch. So I use the industrial adhesive. Uh, you can buy this stuff. It has nothing to do with sewing, but it's just a little tip from your old Uncle Dave. <laughs> but it's an industrial strength adhesive. And you can stick a knife on there and that thing will never come off. And if you, think it, if you think it might, you can wrap the whole thing with paracord and then hot glue it from the back. But anyway, this is what the sheath came like from the factory. Okay, It had the belt loop, and from here to here, it had the handle. And I was afraid that if I tripped or as I was hiking, it would stab me in the side. So I bent a piece of stainless steel, and I made this loop. And that's another thing, is not only is this a tiny loop, but I made a big one that would fit on a GI pistol belt. All right, see, I just made it out of canvas. So now this thing rides down lower on my leg. And not only has it got a bigger place for a, a belt loop, this dangler, but I, I went ahead and took it another step and I added a, uh, I added a little pouch for a ferro rod. See, that's another thing. You can just put a little ferro rod right in there. Of course, now I'm using bigger ferro rods, but I mean, it's just, that's a neat little sewing project, adding a dangler to it. And then another thing is this this right here, I sewed up this stuff. I sewed up a set of uh, elastic webbing so that it'll go around my leg. That way the machete won't be flopping around everywhere. So that's another way of outfitting something. All right. All right, we're getting at 10 minutes. So let me, I'm going to have to wrap this up. And another thing that you can do is I just went ahead and made an entire sheath. I think there may be a video on this, but this part right here is for uh, it's for a silky saw. Well, yeah, you put the saw in there, and then right up here, okay. Let's pull this out. I'm, I think I made this the Ontario Artac Two, and the Hungalas is about the same thing. Okay, now I made the whole thing out of cloth. This is just cloth where the saw goes in. But this I have lined with three layers of two liter bottle. <laughs> Literally a two liter bottle because it's like, I think polycarbonate. 
And you don't have to worry about it cutting the sheath. And then I made, I added this to it. I added Velcro to hold it. Let's put that in there. I added Velcro to hold it. And then here's a belt loop in the back. And so you can see the sloppy quality of the stitching, but I ain't trying to win no beauty contest. <laughs> and then I sewed on, I made a little loop in the back with this webbing. And see this thing right here attaches around my leg. And I put the edging all around it. But see that way it's my own sheath that I made at home out of a heavy canvas. Or I can carry a saw and a machete. And I ain't got to worry about, I mean you don't have to make it out of kydex or leather. Because you can make these liners. Now let's take it a step further. You can look at products and get inspiration from them. Because this thing right here has a folding saw. And I remember when I looked at this, I thought to myself, I wonder, you know, it's got a belt loop on it. And I thought, I wonder if I can add this to a machete. And at one time I added this to a machete pouch. But then you're thinking to yourself, hmm, do I want to carry a saw with my machete? Or do I want to carry a little mini shovel? Or do I want to carry a knife? So that's when I got the idea for this right here to make the four item sheath. <laughs> now that's a lot to carry on your leg, but what I did is I've got it rigged up to where you can either carry it on a belt or you can attach it to your backpack or when you get to camp you can attach it to a tree or this is so heavy you can't hike with it but you can wear it around camp when you're building shelter. And the way it's designed is I have a place right here for a, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember what goes there. This is the saw. The saw goes in here and it's got a, a, a liner. And then this has got a four layer liner for a knife. And then this pouch down here is for a saw. And then this pouch here is for a mora. See, I've got it made with a liner to where I can put a mora in it. Matter of fact, here's a mora right here. See how I've got it shaped on the bottom right there? Put that mora right in there and then pull that over. <laughs> you put your saw in here, then you put your machete or knife in here, and then you put your shovel in here. <laughs> see, just another one of the mean Now this projects. is the kind of junk I was talking about right here that you can see. I've got all these different kind of pieces of cordura here. Heavy cordura. And honestly, what's the difference in this cordura and what they sell you? You know what I'm saying? This is... This is a pouch with Cordura and Velcro. And this is a piece of Cordura. This is, a, this is an Ontario sheath. Well, what is it? It's a Cordura pouch with a bunch of webbing and some Fastex buckles here and some uh, Velcro. And then on the back, it's got a bunch of uh, webbing. All right. Well, I showed you earlier that big bucket of webbing I have. And see, all you do is you just take stuff like this. You buy this stuff from Goodwill. And it comes with, they come with all kinds of stuff on the inside, all kinds of material. And they come with all kinds of fast text buckles where you don't even have to buy them if you don't want to. There's just, I mean, there's just tons of material here. Here's some right here. This is one that I've butchered all up. All kinds of zippers and cord, cordura material on it. I've got a whole box full of this stuff. There's more cordura, more cordura. See, it's just, it's never ending. I've got just rolls of this stuff, you know. So anyway, that's what you want to do is you want to build up your supply like that. And I'm going to show you my, let me get my bucket again here. Because I've got a bag I'm going to show you too. Let's see. So you keep a bucket full of all this webbing here and there's all kinds of buckles down in the bottom and stuff. Uh, all kinds of buckles laying in the bottom and, and, and that's the kind of stuff that you want to use right there. All right, now here, this is a machete that I'm going to be making something for pretty soon, but I think this video is going a little too long. Uh, but I'm going to make a, make something for this. This is a parang. This is called a uh, Han Shub Bashing. And it, for a long time, this machete was uh, $80. And around Christmas time, they had it for 40 And so I thought I'd take a chance on it because I like the shape of it. I love a parang. So, the parang came in, and what I'm going to do with this thing is I'm going to make a pouch, just like I did. But hopefully, 
I'm gonna make a pouch a little bit neater than this one. This one I made years ago when I wasn't that good at sewing and it was kind of sloppy. But I'm gonna make a real neat looking pouch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this, I'm gonna take some of this industrial Velcro and I'm gonna Velcro it to this. So that way, what I can do, let me find it. I think I've already lost it. I don't even know where it's at. Oh, here it is. <laughs> that way, what I can do is I can have a machete and a saw. Or, what I can do is I'll be able to pull that pouch off because it's Velcroed on. And I'm going to add some of that Velcro to this factory martini sheath. And then that way, if I want to, if I carry this machete, I can carry this knife. If I'm going to wear a neck knife, I won't need this one, and I want a saw, so then I'll carry this one. Ain't that cool? So just another idea for a project. One other project I forgot about, and some of you may have seen the video, but it was where I made a, uh, a mat. Now, they don't sell mats like this, because what this thing is, I can pull the cover off and wash it, but what's inside is three layers of foam, and in between each layer of foam is mylar. So it's three layers of foam, two layers of mylar. And there, nobody makes anything like this. And this is so warm when you lay on it because nothing comes from the ground to your body. And your body heat never gets sucked into the ground. It was reflected back, back to you and you don't sweat when you, you lay on this. So this is yet another wonderful addition to your gear by sewing it yourself because they don't sell this and that's what you got to think about you got to think about being out of the box you got to think about creating your own gear be inventive you know if they don't make it build it <laughs> all right so i hope i didn't bore you with it i hope you understood that's i mean there's no reason to go on and on and on about the sewing machine that's the basic of it top spool bottom spool or top bobbin bottom bobbin they got tension and they work together. And if you have trouble with your machine and you can't figure out what the tension is doing, you can do like I did and do the different color threads. And so just everything else that I said, uh, that's, I mean, if you're just a hack like me and you just want to pick up a sewing machine and start sewing, do like old Dave does. <laughs> so I hope you found it helpful. Uh, I may, I may make a video out of making the, the machete uh, sheath, the saw sheath, but it, it, that's that's too complicated to make a full length video. So uh, maybe that'll come up later. So until the next one, we shall we shall see you in the next one.